Hello and welcome to part 14 of the Johnny Blender 2.0 series. In this section we're going to go ahead and go on with the texture map and kind of clean this up in here. And we'll do that in GIMP so you can kind of get an idea of, of how to use that along with Blender to get a nice texture. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save this as 14. I was playing with this a little bit earlier so I'll just overwrite that. Save. And we'll just go ahead and pop into GIMP. Bring it up over here. Okay. And I will open the JB skin. You gotta you might need to uh, navigate to whatever folder you saved it in. So JB skin, go ahead and open that. And let me arrange it here in this viewport a little bit better. Okay. So now if you hold on control and scroll your mouse wheel, if you have one, you can zoom in. I think uh, probably control or shift shift plus also zooms in and then trying to figure out all these keyboard controls I'm not real familiar with with the GIMP if you don't have a mouse wheel you, I guess you can go ahead and just uh, click on the, the zoom tool over here and zoom out like that or zoom in like that so Anyways, so what we're going to do first off is use the healing tool right there. It looks like a couple of band-aids crossed over each other. And we're going to clean up these areas that are kind of empty, like where you can see the, uh, the uh, test grid underneath. So we'll use the healing brush, and what we need to do is sample an area that kind of has a nice solid skin texture that we can, we can tell this area that it needs to look like this, and then it'll kind of blend in along the edges that's surrounding colors. So hold down control and you can click over there in a nice area and see it leaves the little uh, dotted line circle there. That means that's the area that you're sampling. And now you can just paint over an area like that. It automatically blends it in real nicely. So we'll just do that. And then we'll come down here. Actually, yeah, this is gonna be a little difficult there on the lips because I'd like to kind of keep the lip texture but I also want to fill in that whole area so let me just paint in here like this you know what let's undo that a better idea for this particular section since there's since there's such a big area there we can use the uh, the clone tool and then we can do the same thing we were doing up here just go ahead and sample that area and we'll just paint in basically a copy of that area just to fill this in and then we can come back in with the healing tool and kind of blend the edges of it together quite a bit better so let's go ahead and paint all that and now we'll use the healing tool and just go ahead and sample that area up there again and this time just click in here and just get a nice transition up going down into the whisker area let's go up a little higher there Okay, so that gives you a nice gradual transition into that area. Okay, and now, oops, um, the inside of your mouth is not going to be this light colored. So let's uh, let's see if we can clean that up. Let's grab our free select tool and go ahead and check on the feather edges and the radius. Eh, Ten's probably fine. So let's just basically outline our lips area here about like that and now we'll go to colors and change the I guess the color balance we can play with a few of these different tools and let's see let's make it a little bit more red so we'll slide this over here maybe drag these down a little bit and it needs to be darkened a little bit too so let's go ahead and hit OK there and then we will go in colors and I guess we'll do the brightness contrast and just lower that lower its brightness. Yeah, that works pretty well. And then maybe the contrast mm, up just a little bit, and we'll hit OK. And now we can just uh, say select none. And if you hit Shift Control A, it does the same thing. So that's pretty good. It might be a little too dark. So let's see if we can't desaturate that just a little bit. I guess we can use the old 
lasso tool again, select it all, and make sure you close the selection. There we go. We'll go tools, hue saturation, and let's lower that saturation down some. Okay, that'll work. Okay, so we shift control A to deselect all that. Oops, hit spacebar on accident. And where'd it go? Oh, okay. I must have turned the visibility off somehow. Oh, I guess that's what I did. Okay. So now let's zoom out. And let's go up here and work on the eyes also. We'll do the same thing. Use the healing tool. Let's go ahead and select this area over here. Hold down Control and click over there. And we'll just paint this in. Real nice and easy. Okay. And now let's do the same thing over here. We'll select that section right there. Okay. Now let's zoom out just a little bit. And let's go ahead and clean this up here and there. Okay, let's clean up this nose area some. Okay, so that's pretty decent. Now I want to go ahead and get rid of the eyebrows because we're going to go in there with the particles, particle hair later on and put those on there then. So, same deal. Actually, on this one, let's go ahead and kind of do like we did on the mouth. Let's get the clone brush and go ahead and select the cheek area and then we'll just paint over the eyebrows. like so and then we'll use the healing tool to go ahead and go and sample the cheek again and go ahead and clean this clean up the edges there okay and we'll do the same thing on this side sample this area here just paint those out And then the old healing brush to clean. Oh, got a sample first. And then there you go. Clean up the edges. And let's go ahead and clean up some of these wrinkles up in here, too. Okay. So let's go ahead and zoom out. That's looking kind of, <laughs> kind of creepy, kind of awkward there, isn't it? But that's okay. Now let's uh, let's kind of try to get rid of the hair a little bit. So we'll get the old lasso tool again, and let's just kind of outline where the hair is at. Kind of no man's land. I don't know what. Can't see what I was doing there. Okay, let's make sure. Okay, everything's outlined pretty well. Let's go ahead and make a new layer over here. Um, new layer, okay. And let's get the paint bucket. And well, actually, first of all, let's grab the eyedropper tool right there so we can get a nice color. And let's check about right here, right there, right by the hair. And we will go ahead and paint bucket that area. Oh, undo that. Need to make sure. Let's see. I thought using the eyedropper would get the color that I'm looking for. No. Well. Okay, I guess I put it in there. So that'll work. There we go. And we will paint that. Okay, that's a little too peachy colored, so let's change that up here in the colors. Let's go hue saturation and change the hue. Maybe a little bit more pink color and a lot brighter. And let's change this, bring the saturation way down. 
Okay, so that'll work. And I guess we can go ahead and see if we can merge this down right there. I don't know if you can see this. There we go, merge down right there. Okay, so now it's all part of one layer. Control Shift A to deselect. And now we'll do the same thing we were doing with the edges of everything else, kind of blend these two together. So let's go ahead and hold down Control and let's just click about right there. And let's make our brush a little bigger. There we go. And maybe a little bit even bigger than that. So Control and just go ahead and start painting in this area. We don't need to go too extremely high because the hair will start coming in. Go and sample some different areas if you like, just to give it some variation. And if you if you are bald or if you want to make your character bald, you can just keep going all the way up if you like. Let's go as far as you want to. Okay, and like I said, uh, I'd like to even out some of these skin tones. So let's go ahead and get this chin area here. If you hold down Shift, you can add to your selection there. Let's go ahead and get all of that. There we go. Okay, and now we will do colors, brightness, contrast, and let's just darken that up just a little bit. And the contrast down as well. Okay, now it's a little gray, so let's go hue saturation and increase the color saturation zone. And, hmm, that's really not really looking the way I'm wanting to, so I'll go ahead and undo a couple times, actually just once. To redo, I know in Photoshop if you if you want to undo you get you hit control Z and then if you want to go back to what you want before you undid, undoed, <laughs> you hit control shift Z, but on GIMP if you want to redo you hit control Y and it redoes it. So so let's let's do this again. Just a little bit darker. Okay. Control Shift A to deselect. And you can kind of see where we selected. So let's undo Control Z. And now let's go ahead and Control Z a few times until we don't have anything selected. Let's set the feather edges here on our select to be a little bigger. And now we'll come in here and close it. And now it'll be a little bit better transition there. Okay, Control Shift A. Okay, now you can't really see where we selected. So, okay, so we got basically our face done. Now, uh, the ears were looking really bad, so let's do the same thing over here. Use the old, uh, the old band aid healing tool, and let's just go in here. Actually, I guess we need to select. Let's go ahead and select here on the face, right here on the cheek. Nice clean area. And we'll go ahead and clean up the edges here. Let's go make our brush just a little bigger. Let's go all the way up to the edge. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Just want to keep the basic color tones and hues and get rid of all the you know all the uh, creases and wrinkles and everything oops gotta make careful where you're clicking is there another ear there it is Go ahead and clean this up. Okay. And let's go ahead and and 
do like we did on the on the face. Let's do go ahead and do this back here. I um, guess we'll do the selection. Let's zoom out some. There we go. And let's just select all of this. Careful along there. You don't want to grab the ear too on accident. Okay. And let me go ahead and if you hold on Alt, let's see. No, it's I guess Shift adds control subtract so you can draw back in here. Okay. And let's go ahead and create a new layer. Okay. And we'll go ahead and paint. Actually, let's select see if we can Okay, there's the eyedropper select tool right there. And we'll go ahead and select that color right there. Okay. Awesome. Piece of cake. And we'll go ahead and paint that area in. And let's go ahead and merge down. Okay, now Control Shift A to deselect. And we'll use the old good old healing brush. Go ahead and select. It's just somewhere here on the neck will be fine. Let's go ahead and clean up this area here. Go ahead and get rid of some of this hair particles from that fresh haircut I got that day. Okay. So let's go ahead and save this. Okay, and now we'll pop back into Blender. And if we go uh, image reload, it'll bring in our modified texture here. And let's see what this looks like here in our window. If I go to make sure, yep, yeah, okay. Um, one thing I noticed, I was playing with this a little bit after I finished recording in part 13. Uh, if we go ahead and render, you can see that it looks okay, but it really, the lighting is horrible. So let's go ahead and X that out, and let's let's uh, put in some better lighting in here. So I'm kind of done with this window over here, so I'm just going to merge them back. Just uh, click on the, the little diagonal lines and just click and drag over. There we go. And let's go into top view, hit 7 on your keyboard. And it looks like I've rotated him a little bit. So let me Alt R to clear out his rotation. Okay, back into top view. We got the one light set up here. Let's check the settings on it. Inverse linear, good. Energy one, good. Okay, so let's go ahead and Shift D with it selected, and it will duplicate it. We'll drag it over here and rotate it to where it's kind of pointing at the other side, sort of as a fill light, filling in this side. kind of rearrange these to where they're pointing more at him than just excuse me in, in his general direction and let's let's lower this side one here down a little bit let's put it at uh, let's put it at point uh, six five that'll be fine and now let's see what it looks like when we render go ahead and save go ahead and render it out and that looks a little bit better Still got some weirdness going on here on the lips, but uh, I think that's due to the the mouth area. And you can see where, like around the ears, needs to be cleaned up some. So, anyways, uh, one other thing that we'll mess with uh, later on is called subsurface scattering, and that'll really help soften that skin up. See if I bring up that render again. You can see how how hard it looks it almost looks like a, you know painted plastic or something like that but uh, if we use subsurface scattering it'll it'll give it a li little bit more of a an actual fleshy look and it'll look a lot better then so um, okay so that's gonna be all of part 14 and thanks for watching I'll see you in part 15